Good evening, good afternoon, depending upon where you're watching us. I am Greg Pappas, and you're watching yet another episode of Live with Gregory Pappas right here on the Pappas Post Facebook page. Um, I'm very honored to have with me today the writer, director uh, of the award-winning, critically acclaimed, box office record-breaking film, Man of God, writer-director Yelena Popovich, and her husband, producer of the film, Man of God, Alex Potter. Um, they've come all the way from Greece. They're here uh, doing screenings. They're here doing publicity. They're here doing promo um, about this wonderful film. We've got some very exciting news. Um, we were very fortunate to premiere the film in New York City uh, last week at the Museum of Moving Image. The um, response was remarkable. People were crying in the theater. Uh, a woman came up to me afterwards and just hugged me and thanked me. I said, don't thank me, it's not my film. She made this film with his help. Uh, they're the ones we need to thank. Uh, the good news is this film is going to be screening nationwide in 800 cinemas across America in 47 states on March 21st. If you haven't booked your tickets yet, you should get on right away to Fathom Events Com. And they both looked at me when I said March 21st because the good news is the response has been so great to the March 21st screening is that the company has already added a second screening a week later, March 28th. So you have to understand this. It's not like you go to the movies and you watch it whenever you want. There are two screenings, March 21st at 7 p.m., in 800 cinemas across the country. Unless you're watching from one of the three unlucky states. Do we know what the three unlucky <laughs> states are? I don't know. Curious. Probably like, I don't know, I would guess like Idaho. Sorry, Idaho, I love you. <laughs> um, probably Idaho. I'm curious. I mean, maybe the Dakotas, North Dakota, South Dakota. Is anybody out there watching? Do people actually live in North Dakota and South Dakota? Are there Greeks in North Dakota and South Dakota? Anyway, fathomevents.com. And what you do is you, you select the film Man of God and you put your zip code in and it tells you what cinema is playing. And it's very easy because you click the link and you just buy your tickets yep. and you show up. So March 21st or March 28th, 7 p.m. screening in 800 cinemas in 47 states. 175 cities. 175 cities. So it's amazing. It's pretty accessible. It's really a, a remarkable thing. And, and Yelena, I want to talk to you about this film. And I know that um, my audience is definitely interested in this because anytime we've ever published anything about this film, um, I made the mistake last year think I told you this story. Uh, I went to see the movie in Athens I and I made the mistake and published something. I must have gotten a thousand messages. I mean, the film was still, they were still working on this distribution deal. They were, I'm responding to over a thousand people. And they're like, when's the film coming to America? When can I see the film? And it was just like, oh, I shouldn't have published anything. <laughs> I mean, not, if we knew, we would have been able to just send the link and here it is. And I mean, people are still asking me, you know, about this film. Um, before we talk about the film, I got to tell you about my experience. Um, first of all, it was when the movie was out in Athens. Um, it was playing everywhere. And I have an apartment in the center of Athens, and I went to see the movie. The lady looked at me like, you want to see right, right now? I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, it's been sold out for days. I said, what do you mean it's sold out for days? She said, yeah, and the next four days are sold out too. And the film was screening like four times, five times that day. I said, you've got 20 screenings in the next four days and they're already sold out. She said, they're already sold out. A week later, I was able to finally reserve a ticket online. I saw the film. I'm not going to talk about the film. You have to go watch it on March 21st or March 28th. What I am going to talk about is the experience after the film. Um, the film ended with that, in my opinion, the most amazing scene of the film uh, with Mickey Rourke. Um, that's all I'm giving away. Lights came on, credits were rolling, and nobody got up. People were just sitting in their chairs. I saw people crying. 
I saw people just staring. I saw people embracing each other. Um, I've never experienced that in a movie. I mean, I've left movies feeling energized, you know, when the guy wins or the bad guy dies and Batman has saved the world and you're out there saying, yeah, yeah. This was the most unique experience I ever had um, at a movie. Um, and, and, and that I think is, 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 forget about the box office, that's great, you broke records and we'll talk about that. That impact, that emotional impact, because that's what film is intended to do. It's intended to entertain, it's intended to provoke, yes. to inspire. So let's dive right in, because I'm sure people are already starting to comment. Shut up already and let her talk. But can I ask you one question? Yeah. How old was the audience? Young, a lot of young people. Uh, there were a lot of older women there, like yayas and papus and whatever, but for the most part, it was a young, uh, there were a lot of twenty somethings there. I mean, it was a which normal is, mixed is, crowd. Which is what made me happy. And, yeah. And because um, there were some predictions that only yayas were going to see a film like this. Well, but there was, aren't enough yayas yeah, to, yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, break box office yeah. <laughs> records in Greece. Uh, and we'll talk about the, the stats later with Alex. And I want to hear this because I think it's important because the film was competing with some American blockbusters at the time that were out. So. Uh, but before we do that, this is a film about the life of Saint Nectarios, um, a, a, a contemporary saint of the Orthodox Church, one of the most recently canonized saints, and a saint that resonates with many people. Uh, many people have shared their stories of, of various miracles and people becoming uh, healthy again after sicknesses. Uh, many people make pilgrim pilgrimages to the monastery in yeah, Edina. Yeah. Uh, why a film about St. Nectarios? You know, interestingly enough, I, I have, and I've said this before, I'm going to say it again, I, I honestly never thought of making a film about a saint. I was always uh, on the side of a, uh, positive energy, making inspirational films, films that would help people in some way. Uh, but uh, I never, it never crossed my mind. I didn't have that anywhere in my head that one day I will make a film about a saint. Uh, until I read a book about him in 2012. And uh, that was in, uh, I bought a book in Belgrade. I was there um, uh, after a year of my father passing away. I wasn't able to attend the funeral of my father because I was an American I mean, immigrant in the United States. We all, many people know what that means. You know, when you, your uh, papers are not resolved, you know, you can't really leave you can't the country, travel. you can't travel. I had two children, I couldn't just leave my children every single weekend, you know, so, so I, I couldn't uh, do that. So I, it was extremely emotional experience for me. So just to mention a couple of things about my father, which I think are kind of similar to St. Nectarius. He was, uh, he wasn't a man of church. He, would, he didn't even go to church. He, he, but I would say he was a man of God, you know, like, like my dad. So I, uh, he was a very honest, honorable man who uh, was uh, very educated. He was one of the best civil engineers in the country because of the system he lived in and because he refused to uh, do things that are unethical. Uh, disrespectful. He was loved by the people, by simple people that worked for him because he always treated them with respect. But he wasn't liked by people in the power positions because he wasn't willing to do what they were willing to do, which is usually take advantage of everybody to uh, go ahead in their life, so called. Mm -hmm. And because of that, uh, at one point, uh, he was literally. This is what actually happened. Uh, they were trying to set him up, and one day, knowing that he cared about people, they uh, there was this uh, uh, highway built in the northern part of Serbia, and it was a really strong wind. So they told him, like, send the workers <coughs> to work. They had to, you know, get up really high to, to wire something. And my father said, I will not send anybody in this wind to go up there and, and lose their life. I'm not gonna be responsible. These people didn't care about anybody's life. You know, they, they, you know, it's a familiar story. So they knew that he was not gonna put anybody at jeopardy and he said no. And because of that, they brought him to court. 
They brought six false witnesses to testify falsely against him. He lost his job. He was taken down from his position. He never again um, worked at any important or, or, or high-end company. He worked in a small factory. Even though he was one of the most talented, best civil engineers in the country, and he never complained. People around him complained. I remember even my mom or people around would always whisper and talk about how maybe he shouldn't have been so righteous. Maybe he should have sell out at one point and so we could have had more homes and a better life. But I always respected him for that. And um, when he passed away, he was very humble. But I remember saying, I can go to sleep peacefully. That's what I have. So I have more than most people. So um, that was a parallel. So when I read a- when a huge I read parallel. A, when, I, when, I, when I read a book about St. Nectarius and, and, and not seeing my father for 10 years before he passed away, you can just imagine. You know, that was like, um, I think uh, Life of St. Nectarius really um, struck a chord in me. So it was and a personal that, experience yes. uh, that, that provoked you. Yes. Uh, 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 did you grow up in the church? Are you a religious no, person? No, I, I did not grow up in the church. My parents did not go in the church. Uh, church was something that I found personally. My faith is important to me. Um, uh, my faith always played a big part in my life. My life wasn't easy, uh, much easier than a lot of people. I don't want to complain. I, I'm grateful for what I have, but it wasn't super easy life. Uh, life of an immigrant um, in, in the U.S. by myself in the entertainment industry. So, um, not willing to sell out. <laughs> there you go. I'm joking. Good example. Good example. Okay. So, so it was. Uh, so basically. Um, my faith is what kept me, uh, believing that there was a father out there, somebody who loved me, who cared for me. Uh, there was, and, and I always felt protected. And, and no matter what was happening around me, I, 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 I had that strength. And when I felt I had no more strength, that's when I experienced the, mo the most strength. And I experienced that personally. And if you remember in the movie, there were moments in the film where St. Nectarius is by himself. And then he's praying mm -hmm. for others. You know, I, I I've remembered my little apartment in New York City here, uh, being by myself. And, and when I directed that scene, it was extremely personal. And, and I've, I've directed it in a very specific way. And I felt it, it had an impact. Uh, I don't want to talk about it, but you, you've seen it. So uh, a lot of scenes in this film are very personal to me. As a matter of fact, I've chosen things. They're so personal that I was able to put myself in, in, in it because knowing from, I studied at a very, very prestigious, uh, when I say prestigious, not because of the monetary thing, because we, people there really learn their craft properly. Uh, it's called Playhouse West. I studied acting, directing, and writing. And I understood from my craft that I've, I've learned and acquired at that place that only if I understand things on a personal level can I share it with others. Sure. And because I was able to do that, I decided to embark on this journey. And if given an opportunity to make the film, there was a chance, at least to some degree, I would be able to bring St. Nectarius to the hearts of people. And that was my, uh, my main intention in making this film because I felt that he could help people, that his example is needed especially nowadays. Example of extreme love, humility, uh, forgiveness, somebody who who really loved people, who resilience. Who, resilience, who didn't who didn't uh, care about your ethnicity, about your, your, your religious background, who truly was willing to sacrifice for everybody and I think made a better world for others and was victorious in the end because uh -huh. of the choices he made. A lot of things struck me about the film that, that stick with me. Um, one of the things was that you made a film about a Greek Orthodox saint that wasn't a religious film. I, I didn't feel, I could take my American friends, my Muslim friends, my Jewish friends, and not be embarrassed atheist like I'm trying to, yeah. atheist friends, yeah. Because it's it, it wasn't a religious film. It was a biopic about a guy mm -hmm. who happened to be 
a Greek Orthodox metropolitan who eventually became a saint. It could have been a story about a factory worker. Exactly. It could have been a story about a civil engineer exactly. uh, in Serbia exactly. that experienced a similar thing. And, and, and that was very, it's very unique how you did that. You made a film about a Greek Orthodox saint that is not a religious film. But I did it on purpose mm -hmm. because only that way people can relate to the story. When you, when you, at least what I believe. I think, sorry, I think what I'm trying to say is it's a human that, story. But that's what I'm saying. It's I, not I, God I, and no, all no, this. No, no, but you have to make it human, especially yeah. if you, if you, if you touch upon the subject of spirituality. Mm -hmm. Because I think people that are making films about spirituality, if they're not, if their approach is not very human and very personal, they're, they're, they can very easily fall in, into some kind of a, a, I don't know, something that people cannot relate to yeah. at all. But, but even even the, I'm trying not to give as um, uh, parts of the film away, but even the miracles, uh, these adios uh, at the end, they, they weren't these like, you know, lights coming down from heaven and <laughs> angels no. coming around and no. doing no. magic on the guy. And no. they were just, it was just so it was real. 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 Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was going yeah. after. And, and Alex, Alex knows this. I, yeah. mean, I was always in the choice of my actors, everything, you know, everything we did. I, I always told everybody, this has to be very real. Every aspect of it in order to have an impact that I wanted it to have. So. I want to remind everybody watching, if you have any questions, um, Yelena and, and Alex are, are, are going to watch uh, after the live. Any comments that come in, they'll comment if you have any questions about the film. Um, they're on Facebook. You should also follow the uh, Instagram uh, account. It's uh, Man, Man of God, God. Man of God the movie. Man of God the movie on Instagram. Um, Alex, um, as a producer of the film, you were kind of responsible for putting all these pieces together. Um, one of the other things that, that struck me was the beautiful cinematography. Um, it, it, the film really took me back, took me, I felt like I was in Alexandria in Egypt. I felt like I was in all these, where, where did you guys shoot? What are some of the locations that you shot? We shot all over Athens, uh, so Attiki. Uh, we did so we mainly in, in Athens and Athens surroundings and uh, and then we ended up shooting two days in Egina mm -hmm. uh, on the island uh, and actually we shot uh, some of the scenes were in the actual room for St. Nectarius wow in, um, the in, huh? the in the monastery in the monastery wow. and in his bed his real bed wow um, and then there's there's also another scene uh, which is there's a monastery that's a little bit uh, that's close to to the monastery of Saint Nectarius, uh, which is called uh, the monastery of Chrysoleon uh, Tissa, and uh, there's an icon there, uh, Mother of God, and uh, that's the original icon that Saint Nectarius prayed to, um, and it's still there, and we were oh, able. Oh, this is the scene at the end. Yeah, yes. and we were we were able to shoot. Um, right there. Wow. Uh, yeah. So what an experience. Yeah, it was, it was, it was special. It was special. We um, also heard at one of the events, I'm not sure which event I heard you say this, um, when you had some challenges during the shoot or when, you know, actors canceled or whatever, you, you said it always ended up happening and you, you say that St. Nectarius himself was one of the producers yes. of the film. He's, so he's I, the, I like that. I like the main producer. Yeah, the main film. producer of the film. Um, <laughs> You know, the other thing that struck me is you had some really big names in this film. You had a big, big names, uh, Greek actors. You had a well-known Russian actor. I mean, the number one actor in Russia. You had um, uh, Mickey Rourke. Um, how do you manage bringing all these pieces together? You know, we, we tried to you accomplished put, put, <laughs> put things together. And first of all, I want to say that uh, I, I, having a background in theater, in acting, I love working with actors, and, and uh, uh, the main part of, of my directing was actually choosing the right actors for the roles, and I was very lucky to have had Aris, who I thought was perfect for the role, and all the other Greek actors uh, were amazing, and 
I had, I thought of, because we wanted to make an international film, and to, to have an international distribution, you need a couple of international names. Sure. So we were thinking who and how and when, and, and I remember uh, about Mickey Rourke, I, I thought of him for the role he played, the role of a paralyzed man. <laughs> and I thought of him because uh, uh, not, not only that we all know he's a very good actor, we've seen him perform in many different films, uh, but there was one particular movie uh, that I watched called The Pledge that Sean Penn had directed and Mickey had only one scene in that film but that one scene was so amazing that it really left such an impact on me that later on I when I when I was thinking about my script that about that scene with the paralyzed guy I thought of Mickey Rourke another reason that I thought of him was because even though you know, a lot of people would find that interesting because faith is, I'm, I'm gonna always say, a personal thing, and it needs to be personal to everybody. Everybody's relationship with God is a personal thing. Uh, we're all unique individuals, so we, we our, our path has to be our own way. And uh, and Mickey has his own way, and he happens to be, he's a Roman Catholic, and, and I've known that he actually prays a lot, that he, you know, struggles with his demons with himself and that's what gets him going and he actually prays three times a day he does rosary to mother of god so mm. i knew that about him and then i it took me a while to get hold of him to get in a close to uh, his manager and people that were able to give him the script but once once we were we gave him the script he really responded well because it's a film about a saint and about suffering he responds to those kind of subjects and then he really identified with the role and he, he was able, he said, I want to do it. And I'm really grateful that, that he was willing to come all the way from LA and to Greece at the time of pandemic and... and uh, so you shot this during the pandemic? Yes, we wow. shot on top of everything. There was an extra obstacle. Wow. But I think, to, you know, to mimic more life of St. Itarius, we had to have... Sure. We had to have you had to, to suffer yourself. You had to suffer, yeah, to, to, to make it more real for everybody. <laughs> yeah. So Alex, the um, film was released in Greece to tremendous acclaim. <clears throat> the box office records were broken. I mean, we're talking tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of tickets. I mean, give us some statistics about that. So the film uh, indeed broke a lot of records. Uh, we did 300,000 tickets. It was the highest grossing film of the year in Greece in uh, last year in 2021. Uh, it was number one for four consecutive weeks uh, at the box office, which means that as you know, every weekend there's a new movie or there are a couple of new movies coming into the market. And so theoretically, those new movies will, will come out on top um, because they're new. And, and we, had, you know, we had several big studio movies that were coming out and we kept- Greek as well as foreign. You're competing and, and, with and the Hollywood and, uh, guys the Hollywood too. Guys, yeah, yeah. It was, there was Shang-Chi-La, um, Disney's, Black Widow. And there was Black Widow. It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was Black Widow. <laughs> there was uh, Clint Eastwood's Cry Macho, so all of these films were coming out, and we kept coming out, coming on, top. out on top in first position, um, which was which was quite incredible. So it was, it, it, you know, there was it was a phenomenon, and even our distributor would tell us that we haven't seen this since the Titanic. Uh, wow! Yeah. Well, I experienced it myself, yeah. as I told you. So the film was released in Greece. Um, it then was released in other European countries also. Um, yeah, the film released in, uh, in Serbia, in Russia. Uh, it's coming out um, actually this week. It's coming out um, <coughs> in France, across France. Uh, it will be coming out in Australia. Um, we do have a lot of Australians that follow yes, the yeah. and it's coming, Coast page. It's coming. Uh, we're just waiting for a release date, but it's, it's, it's happening. Um, and uh, Latin America and then obviously right now you know the focus is on the U United States um, and uh, there are other territories which we'll, we will announce we're working on 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 distribution but as you know uh, things have been quite um, tricky with COVID uh, and the cinema so different different countries have had different issues where cinemas were shut down for several, <coughs> several months at a time. And so they, they've been sitting with 
movies that they had acquired sure. uh, before the pandemic that they were supposed to release and they weren't able to release so they were sort of backed up um, which means and you've got space limitations a lot of cinemas don't know if they can open 50% capacity is exactly. it worth it exactly yeah. <coughs> so there, there have been a lot of challenges but at the same time we've we've somehow we've managed to sort of um, maneuver maneuver yeah uh, the, the landscape and, and the minefield um, um, and and the film is getting out there and, and we're bringing it to, to, to the audiences and you know our, our, our first uh, sort of the first stop is really theatrical we want people to see it in a theater because the experience of course is, is very different always much better uh, on seeing it um, on a big screen than, than seeing it I know people have relatively large screens nowadays in their living rooms but it's different uh, when you see, really see it on a of course on a big nothing screen. competes yeah. to watching yeah. it on the big screen so um, I, I'm sure a lot of countries people watching are probably going to be commenting underneath <laughs> what about South Africa what about this uh, they're working on it they're trying to get this yes. film it's very complicated each country or each territory, each territory has different yeah. distribution companies and exactly. I mean the film has legs it's not going anywhere you're you're doing your best to get it seen That's right. by as many people as possible. Um, so, you know, it, 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 it's um, something that, um, of a phenomenon, really. I, I've, the people that have seen it um, have responded tremendously. I think it's also important to know, uh, to let our, our, our audience know that uh, the people in Hollywood are watching. They, they wanna see tweets, they wanna see Instagram posts, they wanna see hashtags, they wanna see engagement. So. We're hoping that March 21st, March 28th, that these cinemas fill up, yep. which by the way, I already know that several of the cinemas um, have sold out yes, because indeed. people are emailing me because we keep publishing posts about this. They're like, hey, I tried buying a ticket for March 21st and it's sold out, yep. what do I do? So that's a good thing because sure. then we might even be adding more and more Extra dates, dates. Yes, after that. Exactly. So the more people talk about it, the more people tell their friends about it. Absolutely. It does good for the film. It Absolutely. gives the film longer legs. Longer legs and uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I exactly, think, uh, and what's, what's amazing about this film, uh, and it's because of what we already have spoken about, that it's for everyone, as we talked about. It's it not is, just for, it really is. Uh, it's been embraced uh, here, like our distributor is not, a, these are not people that are, they know anything about Orthodox Church. They're, okay, they're more maybe in an inspirational space. They've dealt with different. We had a bunch of Catholics exactly, come to but, the but, screening yeah, last but, week. Exactly, but but these these are they're dealing more with Catholic, Protestant, Evangelicals, and they are the ones that are releasing our film. Yeah. So what I'm saying, this is the first time that in in France as well, in Australia, in Latin America, these are not Orthodox distributors. So this is the first time that film about a Greek Orthodox saint is gaining worldwide. Theatrical distribution. Yeah. So that's even it's interesting. It's historic. You know? it's historic. Yeah, exactly. It's historic. It's historic. It really it's is because yeah. uh, it's hitting the mainstream. Yeah, and, that's right. And the mainstream is resonating with this. Yeah. And so. it's not like we like we were we were today at uh, National Herald. Uh, the gentleman said, you know, it's not like if it's not like somebody's pumping billions of dollars into this. It just happened organically that that people genuinely picked up the movie. People there now that are not from, from, from our... The best kind of exactly. people to have exactly. is word of mouth word of and mouth. Exactly. not having this... I mean, it's great to have a couple million dollars yeah, well, of marketing yeah, money behind you it. and putting <laughs> banners up it. all <laughs> over where, all over the place like Star Wars and exactly. all these other things. But I think it's remarkable that, that, that this is happening. I mean, just the, the, the mere fact of this film showing in 800 cinemas across the country in 47 states and 175 cities. Exactly. See, I memorized all the numbers and getting better. Um, I think it speaks volumes for this work of art that, that you've made. Um, I'm sure you guys have lots of questions. Um, we are also going to show and post the trailer of the film. We've already posted the link. Uh, it's fathomevents.com. You select Man of God, the film, and then you put in your zip code and it will tell you the nearest cinemas with a link to buy tickets. There are two options, March 21st, March 28th. Um, Alex Potter, Yelena Popovich, 
I am very honored to have you here. Thank you for sharing your time with my audience, and um, we'll see you on March 21st and see you on March 28th, 20th. and, yes. and hopefully thank you for after that. Thank you. Thank you all for watching. I am hoping to do more regular live with Gregory Pappas, Facebook Lives. Um, I, I do get all of your messages. I try to respond as much as I can. Thank you for watching. Thank you for reading. Um, uh, keep watching our Facebook page for updates about this film. We will publish international distribution dates when we hear more about other countries and, and other territories. You'll share Absolutely. that news Absolutely. with me and we will share it with you. Thank you all. Good afternoon. Good evening. Be well.